Matthew chapter number five, verses one and two. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them. Yes. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. He opened his mouth. Yes. Yeah, he did. And Sister Shirley, he talked to him. For a few moments on today, I want to encourage you from the subject mentorship. Mentorship. Lori Beckman outlines a four step process. In her book, Mentorship, my brothers and my sisters, the purpose of this book is to transform ineffective mentorship into effective mentorship. The essence of this process is to understand, to demonstrate, develop, and advance. Furthermore, military training ready, this process and these principles of understanding, demonstrating, developing, and advancing are key components to the building of God's house. Additionally, we have to understand as mentors, we engage in a reciprocal relationship with selected individuals. And as we engage in this reciprocal relationship, we consistently share life and our ministry experiences. We do this with the goal of guiding them towards growth in their walk with God and equipping them to continue the process with someone else. It's important, my brothers and my sisters, to grasp that as disciples, we should take proactive steps to love one another. Be compassionate with one another. Willing to impart wisdom and doing our best to make a significant impact on the lives of those we mentor through the discipleship process. Are y'all with me on today? Both for ourselves, the Woods, and for others, spiritual and personal growth has always been an essential part of the church. Whether we acknowledge it or not, Spiritual and personal growth is critical to our well-being and it is critical to the well-being of the folks around us. My brothers and my sisters, this necessity remains even if we recognize it or we don't. In order for us to strive and thrive as a church. It is vital that we prioritize 
our spiritual growth. And not only must we prioritize our spiritual growth, we must prioritize and begin to prioritize the natural growth of Hope Missionary Baptist Church. As followers of Jesus, it is our responsibility, Brother Arthur, to continuously equip ourselves and other folks to, the, to fulfill the great commission when Jesus calls us to teach and baptize all nations. Unfortunately, my brothers and my sisters, there are some folks in the household of faith who do not see the necessity for the equipping process or the importance of even getting to church. However, Jesus is glad I want you to understand that now, more than ever, it is critical that the church be relevant in the lives of the community. I want us to recognize the urgent requirements in our current society. There is a need for the disciples of Jesus to stand up and we must be willing to be committed mentors to those who are on our journey with us and those who are going to come behind us to take our place. And we can't be worried and we cannot be insecure, insecure about them taking our place or taking our shine. Because just like God called us, but the right God's calling them too. Mentoring through discipleship is essential for stability in the church. It's essential for growth in the church. And it's essential for promoting the gospel message. She understand in our current era, deception has become the norm. And the truth is unpopular. And sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, the truth is unpopular in the church. But being honest, being dishonest, and manipulative may seem rewarding at times. Leading many to embrace this behavior. And in the times we live in, the darkness in the land of the shadow of death can appear more desirable than the light. However, my brothers and my sisters, we at the church must recognize the need for a change in perspective. We must shift our focus away from a human-centered approach and align our structure and our practices with the precepts of Almighty God. This shift in perspective will enable the church to better understand the calling that God has placed upon it. It will empower us to embrace mentorship and discipleship as fundamental absolutes for the de development and growth of all seekers. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. By investing in mentoring relationships, we can cultivate a sense of stability within our church, allowing the church to thrive even in the midst of our times. I want you to remember that it is God who called us. He called us to this 
work of discipleship and mentorship. See, I want you to understand today that discipleship and mentorship go hand in hand. It is God who will ignite the passion of going to fulfill his commission in his people. And we will go forth boldly to equip the Lord so they can grow their necessary gifts and abilities for the next level of service. We have to embrace the call to mentorship that is found in discipleship. Because through mentorship, we can build a strong, thriving, and impactful church. Amen? And a strong, thriving, impactful church will shine brightly in Central Iceland, New York, and all the world. Our offer for today is Matthew. Amen. And we understand that the name Matthew is not included in the manuscripts of this gospel. Although the author didn't directly identify himself. Various early church fathers, Deacon Grant, Sister Papius, Irenaeus, Origen, and the entire early church unanimously agreed that the Apostle Matthew was the author of this gospel. We have an understanding to the sharing that Matthew was a tax collector. Yes, sir. And because he was a tax collector, he was considered a traitor by his own people. He was a traitor because he, they felt he was a traitor because he worked for Herod Antipas. It is significant to note that Matthew was chosen by Jesus to be one of his committed disciples. Yeah. See, it don't matter where you came from. It matters where you go. Yeah. And after becoming a disciple, he later became an apostle, which is a sent one. And he was a well-known evangelist. My brothers and my sisters, don't let your past hold you back. Certainly Matthew played a crucial role in spreading the teachings of Jesus. And he had a crucial role in sharing the good news of salvation. I'm going to say it one more time. Despite his past as a tax collector, he embraced the new calling with zeal and passion. See, I don't care what you used to do. I don't care what they used to call you. I don't care where you used to go. But when Jesus calls you by name, you need to embrace the calling of Jesus with passion and great zeal. Yes, Through his writings and evangelism, this form of tax collector became a beacon of hope. Do I got some folks out here who are beacons of hope? And I didn't say numbers of There's a difference between the two. They're members of hope and then they're beacons of hope. And he served as inspiration to countless believers. I want you to understand Matthew's transformation serves as a powerful reminder 
that no one is beyond redemption. Put your hands together for Jesus. Pray no one is beyond redemption. In God's grace, it knows no bounds. The Gospel of Matthew was written to showcase Jesus as the Messiah. Yes, and to highlight his lineage as a descendant of David. Amen. It also emphasizes how Jesus fulfills the promises made to Abraham to bless all nations. The gospel is written to provide encouragement to those who have chosen Jesus through faith. It also serves as a tool to draw those ray who are spiritually dead to the light of life, even in the darkness and even in the despair of this world. In our passage, Jesus is actively ministering. He is actively ministering in Galilee among the Gentiles. He has been teaching the truth about God, spreading the gospel of the kingdom of God, and performing miraculous healings for people with various diseases and sicknesses. From what we have gathered thus far, it is clear that our ministries need to mimic Amen. the ministry of Jesus. Because not only is Jesus the master discipler, not only is he the master mentor, but Leon. He is our one true example. Yes. Yes. See, let me throw this in parenthetical. You don't follow the pastor. No. I need you to follow Christ. Yes. But when we engage ministry, uh -huh. we need to be willing to leave HMDC. And go where the need is. And as we go where the need is, we must be fully equipped to teach the truth about God. We must be willing to preach and live the gospel. And additionally to that, we need to allow ourselves to be used by God as vessels of Him. By following Jesus' as an example, our ministries should prioritize reaching out to those in need and equipping ourselves with knowledge and the understanding of truth. We should be prepared to teach and spread the gospel message in all seasons, regardless of our circumstances, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Additionally, as vessels of God's love and God's power, we should be actively participating yeah. in bringing healing to those who are suffering physically, those who are suffering emotionally, emotionally and those who are suffering spiritually. By doing this, Elder Jones, we can make a positive impact in the lives of others and bring hope and light in the midst of darkness. Yeah. Come on. 
to provide greater clarity. In this particular passage, see, Jesus recognizes that his ministry has made a significant impact. It has made an impact on the people. And because it has made an impact on the people, the church is grown. Understanding the importance of this moment and the commitment of those who were dedicated to following him. Jesus took this time to impart his teachings and wisdom into them. It is our mandate when folks see that the ministry is growing to take some time and acknowledge the people and impart Jesus' teaching and wisdom into them. See, Jesus, Sister Sharon, he went up to a higher place. And those who were committed to him, they joined him in the higher place. Are we trying to join Jesus in a higher place? Sometimes we are talked about, but are we trying to join Jesus in a higher place? Sometimes we don't feel good, but are we still trying to join Jesus in a higher place? Sometimes folks so hurt our feelings, but we see still to be striving to follow Jesus. To a higher place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once they got to the higher place, yeah. Mother Williams, Jesus began to teach them, sharing his knowledge and his insights with the intentions of equipping them so they could further the gospel. Are y'all with me? We need to take some time teaching the young folks, sharing our knowledge and our insights with them so they can carry on the mission of Jesus Christ. As Jesus begins to teach, he shared profound insights and spiritual truths that empowered his followers in an impactful way. Through his teachings, Jesus not only provided guidance and understanding, but also inspired followers yes, to become vessels that God could use. Yeah, I know. They were focused on God's love and they moved in his power. This time of impartation, my brothers and my sisters, was an opportunity for Jesus to equip his disciples with the necessary tools and knowledge to continue his ministry. The main message that I want to convey on today is that it's important for us to equip ourselves yes. to teach the truth about God. Amen. It is important that we live a life mm -hmm. that boldly proclaims right. or preaches mm -hmm. the gospel of the kingdom of God. It is important that we as believers engage in a healing ministry as our ministry grows. It is crucial Deacon Woods, that we sit down yeah. and educate the new folk yeah. on our practices, our methods, and the reasons behind what we do, what we do at HMBC. Yeah. These individuals, we teach 
they will work alongside of us. And one day, they will take our place. Yes. When our purpose has been fulfilled. So today, my brothers and my sisters, let us commit and recommit to becoming disciples who prioritize intentionally mentoring other folks. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. With all of that said, what does the shift look like when the current serving disciple evaluates his or her service to the place of being a mentor or a trusted advisor that is seeking to continue to go up with Christ while bringing those who serve now and serve next with them. Yes, yes. Point number one. A trusted advisor never seeks to go backwards. Amen. Uh -huh. And never seeks to stay stagnant. However, while progressing right our momentum only increases Amen. as we elevate closer to where Jesus is. Amen. And as we progress, we progress with the heart or a made up mind to bring those who are with us in the faith. Yes. We want to bring them up Amen. with us. Point number two, a trusted advisor must be willing to spend time giving of their expertise, providing counsel, and giving godly guidance to those seeking a greater connection with Christ. Number three, a trusted advisor willingly and lovingly offers support, imparts knowledge, and gives godly instructions to all who are committed to climb with Christ. The songwriter simply says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. If we're going to become more efficient disciples. We must commit ourselves to do his good will. If we're going to be more dedicated mentors, we must commit ourselves to do his good will. If we're going to go with Jesus, if our desire is to climb with Jesus, if our desire is to serve like and with Jesus, we must commit ourselves to do his good will. Amen. If our desire is to elevate those around us, if our desire is to teach those who got next, we must commit ourselves to do his good will. My brothers and my sisters, we may not always be loved. We may not always be liked. We may not always be accepted. We may find ourselves in the valley of fear. We may find ourselves in the valley of destruction. 
We may find ourselves in the valley of destitution. We may find ourselves in the valley of despair. And we may find ourselves in the valley of loneliness. But we must commit ourselves to do his good will. The songwriter says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'll gain every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. As we draw closer to Jesus and we draw closer to the ship, there is a new highness that we are gaining. As we are doing ministry in the land of the shadow of death, there is a new highness we are gaining. As we get equipped and as we seek to equip, there is a new highness we are gaining. As we launch out into the unknown and as we launch out into the unfamiliar, there's a new high, highness we are gaining. My brothers and my sisters, we will grow in the wisdom of God. We will move in the power of God. We will be enlightened by the knowledge of God. We will increase in the mercy and the grace of God. We will get greater understanding to comprehend the compassion of God. We will get, we will get stronger in our understanding of God. The songwriter says, my life, my love, I give to thee, thou Lamb of God, who died for me. Oh, may I ever faithful be. I'll live for him who died for me. HMBC, I need you to buckle up on this morning because we are going higher. And as we go higher, there will be a shift in our commitment. As we go higher, there will be a shift in our devotion. As we go higher, we will become vessels of unconditional love. So we won't walk like we used to walk. We won't talk like we used to talk. We're not going to go where we used to go. We are not going to serve like we used to serve. Our worship is going to change because we're marching unto Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. That beautiful city of God. As we aspire to ascend, we will experience a change of heart. As we aspire to ascend, we will become more sympathetic to the needs of others. As we aspire to ascend, we will take a lick and keep on ticking. As we aspire to ascend, we will be compassionate and we will be more concerned as we aspire to ascend. Our focus will be just to come to church, but our focus will be to be the church. See, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven it filled my soul it made my heart love and he wrote my name above we just a little talk with Jesus it makes me whole as a disciple Jesus can and he will make us whole as mentors Jesus can and he will make us whole as sponsor. Jesus came. And he will make us whole as worshipers. Jesus came. And he will make us whole in our relationships as a church body, as a church family. Jesus came. And he will make us whole. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? 
being nothing but the blood of presence in the flow that makes me fight it so that the world that I know is nothing but the blood, the blood that gives us strength, the blood that gives us power, the blood allows us to experience direction. It is the blood that gives us strength from day to day. It will never, ever lose the power. Tell yourself, I'm ready for the shift. Yes. Yes. So what does the shift look like? When a current serving disciple elevates his or her servants to a place of being a mentor or a trusted advisor that is seeking to continually go up with Christ while bringing those with them. Number one, never go backwards. Never stay stagnant. Number two, be willing to spend time giving your expertise, providing counsel, and giving godly guidance to those seeking a greater connection with Christ. And last but not least, a trusted advisor must willingly and lovingly offer support, impart knowledge, and give godly instructions to all who are committed to climb with Christ. The songwriter says, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. Tell yourself, it will never, it will never it will never lose his power. The doors of the church are open.